Hello guys, how are you? Franco here, uh, pretty good, pretty excited with this product, project Pathfinder. And thanks to Mario, just dropped all bunch of information for the first disease. And uh, thanks to Mario, I'm really happy to have him on board. We're going to discover a little bit about his, his work with the wildlife diseases. So first pathology is called ascaridiosis, mild spot liver. Ascarisum is the pathogen. What type of pathogen is a parasite? Sometimes we're gonna see virus, bacteria, but this time it's a parasite. It's a big one, big one. The adults are 40 centimeters length. So probably even good for fishing. I don't know, I never tried. Life cycle this parasite. Okay, it's a nematode uh, parasite. They start from the eggs. Eggs in the environment are really tough and can survive a lot. It depends on the heat, um, humidity, exposure to sunlight but it can stay even for between 5 to 11 years so it's pretty long time the host is gonna ingest the eggs the larvae from the eggs are gonna hatch the intestine wall and through the portal circulation they go to the liver and stay for a while in the liver and that's where they're gonna cause the problem and give the name to the pathology milk spot because this migration of the larvae is going to create the inflammation, loach inflammation in the liver tissue and then uh, create fibrosis, create like a calling uh, lymphocytes that comes and don't create these white scars. Um, it's a problem. It's a problem if there are so many of the parasites that are impacting the, the liver. Uh, for example, uh, the slaughterhouse uh, where the liver is really impacted or affected by this pathology, the liver it cannot be used. Anyway, let's keep going. And from the liver, what is going to happen? Again, from the blood circulation, they're going to go to the capillary and to alveolar spaces, so to the lungs. What is going to happen? If there are, again, so many parasites, especially on the young individual, they're going to create respiratory disorders. That's not good. And then from the lungs to the bronchial tree, they're going to be swollen again in the small intestine. Last step, they're going to become adults. Okay, the big fellow, 40 centimeters. The adult, what they do, they produce eggs. And the eggs are going to be eliminated into the environment and spread. Okay, and then there is another guy that go and heat it and the cycle starts. Is it... It a zoonosis. That means that this pathology can I can I get this pathology with with, with in contact with the, with pigs, but the wild boar occasionally due to the wild boar, but it probably would be a little bit different for those community like breeders and farmers. They are direct contact with huge number of pigs. What I can see when I open the, uh, especially for you guys hunters, you open your carcass, you see your wild boar, you open it, and then. You see this liver with mild milk uh, spots, okay? I'm not advising that. The adult are in the inside the intestine. So if you cut the intestine, you're going to find the, the big the big fellows. Anyway, important things for the hunters, trying to not contaminate the meat with the intestine, with the feces, okay? That's, that's really bad. That's where the eggs are. Other things, in terms of wildlife management, okay, the best factor to consider it is like the density. Uh, of course, if you have some individuals in a high density population, these individuals are going to spread the, the, the eggs in the environment and other individuals are going to get and then it's, it's going to be a boom. All the population is going to be affected. Okay, so contain the population if there are these kind of problems. And another important thing is try to understand when you harvest the animal, if there is this pathology. Okay, we'll see in the future how important it is, how much biological data you can get from the carcass. That's important. This is the first one. See you guys for the next one and the next episode. And subscribe.